ready for you. Uh, I did for Yeah. Well, hello. We're live. Uh, this is the UK Uncle Nearest uh, Whiskey Chat. Uh, we're waiting for Sly to uh, join up. He's got some technical difficulties. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he I can't find his rum. <laughs> I was about to say. He, he's looking at his back bar going, which one? Which, one do, which rum defines me as a person? <laughs> oh, that would be a tough question. Oh, don't. Which whiskey yeah. defines me as a... Oof. Ah, it, de man. It, depends what, it depends what time of day. Uh, but we've got um, Ian Burrell, uh, the rum ambassador. Still gets... <laughs> Still never get used to saying that title. And, uh, <laughs> and we've got Sailor, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce your second name. Uh, what does everybody say? Okay. How do you name, say it? Name someone in, um, how do I say it? Okay. In history that was a revolutionary that shares the last name with me. Go Is it really Guevara? Cuban. There you go. There you oh. go. Thank okay. You. Sly nice. is saying hello, but why aren't you in the feed, Sly? You need to check your email. And <laughs> to just click the link. So, so is, is, is Sly actually watching the, uh, yes. the video? Yes. <laughs> You're supposed to be on the show. <laughs> maybe <laughs> thought, maybe thought Sly, Sly probably thought he was like going to be commenting as like one of the viewers. <laughs> That's the it. He's, he's, the, uh, he's the presenter. A bit, a bit, like, uh, a bit like when he's in the bar. He doesn't go behind the bar to make drinks, but he just stay on the other side and just drink the drinks. Oh, he's, he's and from and, the and make comments from there. <laughs> Sly and his magical never-ending daiquiri. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll actually introduce him though. Uh, Sly is the um, uh, the owner of uh, Trailer Happiness, uh, an absolutely amazing rum bar in Notting Hill, which if you've ever been there is, is unbelievable fun and great. And um, if you've ever had the joy of going behind the bar, it's got, it's one of the only bars I've ever been behind that has, I think it's four, has a four deep speed rail. It's yeah, almost yeah. it's almost like you're leaning over to even get to the sink. I wouldn't be able to reach. <laughs> no, it, it's agony on your knees. It's agony. And it's because they've got so many different house pour rums. It's insane. Oh wow. I think they've got like they've got El Dorado three and it just runs all the way up. And I, I, yeah, I can remember it being absolutely crazy behind there. But um <laughs> Yeah, we've all um, decided to set this up, and when Sly joins, he'll join um, as sort of part of the Uncle Nearest initiative. And we were just, we were before we went live, we were starting the conversation on sort of diversity and sort of what's happened in the last. Um, I won't say the last news cycle because it's been a few news cycles now, but uh, <laughs> what's been happening in uh, America and has been mirrored over here with um, with. Uh, sort of lots of marches and activations and um uh oh he doesn't see a link oh bless him we, um and uh so we're gonna sort of start that uh i was gonna start start that conversation sorry i'm just looking at the uh at the at the um he still can't find his link he can't find his link have you told him it's in his email it's in his email it's in your it's in your email open your email up and you're going to click on the link that I sent you, Sly, and you'll be able to jump in. <laughs> Perfect. So we were just starting to touch base um, with you, Sailor, about what's happening sort of round round you. Hmm. Yeah. So um, we. Uh, it's it, it's funny because uh, as I think you guys know, and most of the viewers know, that I lived outside of the country for many many years. Um, I lived in Britain. I lived in London and outside of London, and then I lived in Europe. Um, and it, it's it's hard for me to dis explain to my friends what's happening here when they ask me um, on the other side of the pond. Is it you know they'll say is it really well, like what I'm seeing you know uh, is it really that bad? And I'm like, well, what is what's bad? You know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. An innocent person getting murdered is is pretty bad. So yeah, it's <laughs> it's bad. Um, it, it's it's definitely a different time. Here he is. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Hello, mate. How's it going? Hey. You finally How you doing? <laughs> good. Yeah. Really, you, really you know good. what? Last minute. There was a last minute change of plans. So I had actually I planned to um, do this from my house, which is where I do most well all of the streams I've done thus far. But I'm currently tiling the bathroom floors of Trailer Happiness. And nice. the journey home and back, I haven't got the time. So I've, so I've done a makeshift, a makeshift studio <laughs> in the office. Like and, it. Um, <laughs> I'm liking yeah, it. I've got my, 
I got my, my uncle, uncle nearest. nearest. Right oh, here. Yes, nice. yes, yes. I see, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I reckon I have a green here. Respect. Yeah, yeah, so. Are you going to um, reopening on, uh, on the fourth then? Absolutely. Oh, that's Absolutely. fucking good news. Like, yeah. I was one of the first customers no when they uh, when they opened for serving drinks outside. At a nice. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly the first, maybe the second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was nuts. That first day was that first day was not impressive, and then the next weekend was just absolute mayhem. Yeah, wow, it was imagine. kind That's of terrifying. Good. How many people came out? Yeah. Are you, are you finding there's, get, there's a lot of support, like, sort of locally for, um, for everyone doing the bottle stuff? Brilliant. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's been... I, yeah, it's, go ahead. it was like, it was like um, I, I can imagine, it was probably like one of those pictures you see in the newspapers over here where there are too many people in one spot. <laughs> and all you see is a news report. <laughs> and they're not social distancing. <laughs> you, know, you know, rum and whiskey don't know social distancing. No. Uh, <laughs> that's that's really controversial. Well, you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> but like, um, yeah, uh, for anybody who's what, um, sort of watching from America, they've ju they we are just starting to reopen uh, the on trade here, and they've made sure that we've got a uh, one meter distancing policy. So it's uh, hopefully enough places will open with enough sort of distancing and um, volume that it will make it all worthwhile, sort of thing. Yeah. So. But we, we can uh, sort of flip back into um, Sailor was mentioning some of the activate so, some of the uh, marches and things that were happening over in the states, and we were just about to sort of get onto what's happening over here and and why it's a global why it's of global relevance rather than just the states and mm -hmm. and because uh, that that was one of the things that I think has hit me most about this is the fact that this feels more global than anything else that I saw before. I mean, I was, Absolutely. I was, I was um, around and um, old enough to remember the sort of whole Rodney King stuff. Mm. And even though that felt it reached the global audience, it didn't feel like it was having that much of an impact here with everybody. But this mm -hmm. seems, this yeah. seems like it is. It However, you, you're you're talking about it right now in 2020, so I would call that pretty impactful. The well, fact it's that pretty you hard were to get that. well, exactly, and that's you know that's really the best we could have hoped for at the time because certainly, as you can see, <laughs> uh, you know, a change to end the systematic racism and police violence, it wasn't going to end then. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a long, long road. Many, many, many things have to happen. But um, this is different this time. And, you know, what it meant for me uh, to see, you know, th thousands of tens of thousands of people out in the streets in Germany and in Denmark and all, all over the world mm -hmm. as I'm, you know, in my town in Washington State going, this is, I can't count anymore. I tried to count how many uh, protests and marches I've been to and even driven to the riots to just help when I was much younger. Um, I can't, uh, I, I can't count anymore how many and to be in my late 40s and go, I can't believe I'm still doing this. Yeah. It, it helped us so much to see the rest of the world rise up and say no more, you know, this yeah. is it. Um, and Kimberly, uh, you're absolutely right. It's global because African dysphoria covers everything. A a absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the younger the younger generation, the teenagers that are maybe this is their first protest, it's their first time, let's say, dealing with this in their own consciousness. Um, they're very different. Their attitudes towards they're very different. Um, there's also, you know a change is going to come. How long does that change take? But at some point it will come. Um, what I found interesting was the way our industry has handled it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's been quite polarizing. Um, you know, when, when uh, the tornado happened in, in Nashville right before quarantine, um, you know, people from other countries were, were posting on our page. Are you guys okay? You know, can we help? You know, money was coming in from all over the place, but this has certainly shed some shed light in some dark places for sure. 
And, um, you know, for Matt and I working for this company, it's been even more meaningful, I think. And um, it's been some of the things we're doing, it's just underlined how beautiful the change that our brand is making is. Um, and I wanted, I, we, we kind of talked about, you know, we are a global brand and we, I said, Matt and I were talking um, and I said, well, what is, what's the view like from over there and what, what issues do you have? Um, and I did a little bit of research before this. Do you have as well in the UK? Um, I understand, you know, it's a totally different population, um, mm -hmm. but you know, you guys have been through some of the same things that we've been through here in doing my research. But mm -hmm. what is the, well, actually, Matt, you told me something right before we got on that was ridiculous. You know, it sounds like, you know, you guys also deal with your share of these issues, of course, because it is a global problem. But you're, you're talking about the, the plane that flew over a stadium. Over the Berry, uh, Berry Manchester, Berry, sorry, Burnley, Manchester Burnley, City, yeah. Yeah. where yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. White, lives, uh, White Lives Matter. Um, because yeah. yeah. the, 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 the conversation was before that, it was people saying all lives matter and mm. trying to educa educate people why that sentence wasn't particularly, mm. well, isn't a good one. Yeah. And then as soon as that sort of happened, you saw White Lives Matter, it became inflammatory yeah it became a it, it, yeah. it that, that's, white lives, that's white lives matter was like i would say 95 percent of the time somebody saying all lives matter is saying is saying white lives matter oh, yes yeah. yeah. that's what yeah. they mean yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's that's the sub that's what they mean you yes. know oh, they yes. mean like you know i'm white and white lives matter it's not, they don't mean all lives like you know and asians and yeah. you know yeah. what i mean like other, <laughs> yeah. no they mean they mean white lives matter and so yeah. For me, when I saw the banner, it, I wasn't surprised by it. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't emotionally triggered by it. It mm -hmm. is, it's, 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 um, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Um, that depresses the UK, me so much. The UK. Um, well, this is the thing about it as well is that I've seen a lot of a lot of um, of people, a lot of of my kind of like white colleagues, people I work with, and people in the industry, and I've seen this kind of like it's almost like a new sadness. Right. So one thing that the coronavirus has done is it's forced us to become very kind of introspective and very self, you know, reflective. And we're alone with our thoughts a lot more than we normally would be. So we don't get to have a distraction of work or going out to party and drink. We're just sat alone with these thoughts. Right. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. they, and they're allowed to really like to kind of penetrate a lot deeper than they normally would beneath the surface. So what you're feeling and what you're dealing with is something that black people deal with all the time all the time like that kind of like just that underlying kind of disappointment mm -hmm. in the way that things are is mm -hmm. how you is how you deal with things all the time now the thing is and this is not this is not a you know this is not a fault it's not your fault because you know your, your life is your life but unfortunately when you don't when you don't have to face something the way that we're designed is we will just kind of ignore it like our mm -hmm. life we're very focused on our own goals and so if something doesn't directly affect you, you tend to kind of di either dismiss it or, you know, subconsciously or consciously, like you just put it to one side mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, you kind of look at it as a thing that's happening to somebody else that is somebody else's issue. And for the first time, I feel like everybody understands that it, it, this is everybody's problem. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not a problem mm -hmm. just because, you know, just because my minorities are the ones on the receiving end, right? And just because black people are getting it, you know, on the receiving end of violence, it doesn't mean that this is something that should be dealt with just amongst black people, you know, in this kind mm -hmm. of community of or this, this network of, you know, it, do, it can't work. The only way that we can move forward is if everybody um, takes that uncomfortable feeling, you know, takes that little bit of sadness mm -hmm. and keeps moving and doesn't mm -hmm. take that sadness and go, you know what? I don't. I, I can't deal with this right now. Right. Because that's the other thing as well. It's like if you've got Netflix, you're gonna watch. You know what I mean? Like you can just go. You know what? You can just go. Oh mate, I don't, I'm not in the mood for this right now. I'm really not. I don't want to be depressed. Let me go and you know. Let me go and watch watch some binge watch some some TV show. Yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I mean? Whereas for and Ian, I'm sure you will agree. Like you, you, 
you can't escape this. Right. We're right. happy guys, like we're happy and we love life, but you can't, we can't, we can't, we're not in a position to escape or ignore it. And it would be great if everybody felt the same way. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just to just to add on to everything Sly said is 100% correct. And to add on to that, the pandemic, um, I've always said from day one, this is before we got to the stage where people really under, are starting to understand why black lives matter. The pandemic has, has basically been a microscope, um, um, a microscope to our own realities. Mm-hmm. If this pandemic wasn't going on and George Floyd had been killed, Mm-hmm. we wouldn't be having this conversation mm-hmm. now. I agree. Yeah? We wouldn't be having this conversation now. So what Sly said, apparently, where you say people reflect on themselves, we've had time to reflect on where we are, who we are, and life. We've had that for a couple of weeks, couple of months before the Joy Floyd uh, incident. And because mm-hmm. it's happened at that particular time, and <laughs> some people might say it's the way the, the, the world's worked, it's, it's, it's actually come at the right time. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we are at a stage now where people are actually... Uh, well, I see like some of my friends, my white colleagues, allies that are actually saying to me, Ian, you know what? I thought I knew, but I didn't know. Right. Yeah. 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 I thought I knew, but I didn't know. And yeah. that's what I understand. And that's, and that's why I said, it, it's not going to be, this is not going to be solved by us as, as black people. This is going to be mm-hmm. solved by everybody. It has to be solved yes. by everybody. Yes. So we are in a situation now where we are, it's unprecedented because, yeah, we, we have a generation now that have, have grown up differently from the Rodney King situation. Rodney King situation, again, if we didn't have, if we had social media and the, the way we are, we had a pandemic at that particular time. Yes. We would have been yeah. disgusted. We would have been disgusted yes. seeing yeah. those policemen beating the shit out of this guy to death. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I saw it, even when I saw it in a movie, when yeah. I saw it on X, again, I was sitting down shocked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just because. It, 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 that's how I felt, but there was a lot of people that yeah. watched that, or a lot of people that saw it on the news and saw it live. And even when the the, the policemen were quitted, it didn't really shock them. It didn't really mm-hmm. shock them because it wasn't any time for them to reflect on themselves. So I think what Sly said is an important point, very very important point. I, I, I absolutely yeah. agree with you, and it's also mm-hmm. about interesting. I, I had a conversation the other day with someone. Also, it came. It, it was a perfect storm, mm-hmm. and it came at a time when. People could be out protesting all day and say, I'm not leaving. I'm not going mm-hmm. home because they don't have jobs right now. Some of them, you know, you <laughs> well, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And uh, or colleges or, you know, um, it, it's and so that made it very different, um, you know, and I think for me and like I said earlier, I've always gone to protests. I went to my first protest when I was in high school. Mm. It was Tiananmen Square. Um, it, 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 there was something, something happened inside of me. And so ever since then, you know, injustice has always burned me from the inside. And, um, I feel something different this time. I see something different this time. And, and I, what I, what was different to me is I look in the crowds and it's Mm. mostly white people. Mm. And I'm like, okay, that's how this is supposed to, because this is our job, right? You know, you, Mm. you can't, it's it's I think that's where where it had to go. That's what had to happen. Right. So um, not only and there was a beautiful speech at the protest in eastern Washington um, mm. uh, by a young woman. And she said, this is what we need from you as white people. One is protect us so that yeah. we can yell and scream and 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 be angry and, you know, come and protest and then two, um, when we're tired, do the work for us. Yeah. yeah. And so that's every <clears throat> single day. We have to keep doing that every single day. And um, you know, hopefully this is the real, the real beginning to everlasting. Yeah. As long as uh, as long as everyone does um, continue to believe in the the, the right wing media, because it's funny because um, we <laughs> fly myself and. 99.9% of uh, black people have been subject to this where we've been demonized in the media. So it makes our life irrespective of what happens to us because if we're trouble, if we're demons, if we're killing each other, um, according to the media, then our lives don't really matter. Mm-hmm. It's, an, it's another is, form of detachment. Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. This, the, this is what I, I see it and no one's really mentioned it yet, but I'm sure people will. The media, the right wing media, are demonizing white people that are are doing the work, that are allies, yes. and they're basically yes. putting them into what they call the loony left, 
yes. or the far left yes. society and they're demonizing mm-hmm. the far left. Yes. So if someone has a true agenda to be an ally, they are trying to demonize them in the media to try mm-hmm. to make out that, oh, no, they're, they're, they're crazy, they're this, they want to do this and that type of stuff just to basically undermine the work that they want to do. As mm-hmm. such, but we've seen it all the yeah, time. Yeah. Me and Sly have seen it all the time. We in, here in the UK, we have we have things like um one of the things that my biggest bugbear is when I hear black on black crime. Um, um yeah. that just that just pisses me off big time when I hear. Who that. says white on white crime? Police task force. We even have a police task force yeah, for that as well. Uh, I'm like, yeah. well, wait a minute. So what? There's no such thing as white on white crime or <laughs> Asian on Asian crime. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, I prefer if you'd say it's more of a demographic, like as a poor on poor crime, because this is where a lot of the crime will happen in these poor areas. As such, mm-hmm. it's not just associated with a color. And as we know, with uh, most people are going to kill or cause trouble or fight or commit crime to people within their own what's called um, demographic. So yes, you're going to get some black people that will commit crimes and other black people. You get some white people that will commit crimes and other white people mm-hmm. in general. But to signal and and just to section and say the black on black crime and mm-hmm. signal that inside mm-hmm. the media makes somebody sit down inside their house in an area where they don't really have much contact with black people and say, oh, see, look, they're killing each other, they're killing themselves. It's that negative perception um, that, is, that is fundamentally the issue um, for everything, for all, for all forms of racism, however slight mm. they may be. When you mm. boil them down, they all come to this, this preloaded perception um, yeah. that people bring to you based on you, what they think you are and who they think you are. So obviously in America at the moment, the police officers in America are absolutely wild. They're wild. Mm-hmm. Like yes. they see any kind of black skin and they just think, yeah. you know, they're, they're like, it's literally the very, the very like idea of blackness is a threat to them. Mm-hmm. Like they, they, they are ready for war immediately. And, and as, as, as bad as, you know, in terms of like racial profiling, as bad as I've seen it over here and I've experienced mm-hmm. that. And I've, I've experienced, as a younger um, person, I experienced mm. direct racism from police officers, yeah, like no yeah, subtlety, yeah. like direct mm. sl- racial mm. slurs, yeah. you know, um, threats of violence, that whole, that whole situation. But even during those times, you know, I never, I didn't walk around with the same level of fear that I would have if I was, 100%. In, if I was in the United that's, States. That's, that, this is what I try to make, you're correct. This is what I try to make that difference between um african caribbeans um or african um, descent here in the uk compared to african americans mm. i never leave my house i haven't left my house in in the uh, in the years that i've been uh, on this planet and walked up my house and and prayed that i've got home safe wow. i don't walk around with that fear that mm. i may not make it home mm-hmm. yeah i know i every single african american i know personally has that fear or has that in the back of the mind yeah even yeah. if it's in a subtle yeah. way or yeah. even a joke a doable way yeah yeah if they get stopped by the police yeah. that's yeah. the thing that crosses their mind when i get stopped yeah. by the police here in the uk i don't i don't feel that i'm going to lose my life there is a possibility right, right. right. Quite it, doesn't, it, it doesn't even have to be the police it doesn't even have to be the police it can just be mm. some private citizen who yeah. doesn't yeah. like the look of you I yeah. want to ask you what you're doing here. What are you doing here? Why are you yeah. walking here? Or you're jogging. Do you know what I mean? Like just a random person yeah. that can come up to you and think that they can stop you and yes. question you. Like yeah. this is an insanity that's going on yeah. um, in America right now. That is, um, yeah. that is and, and, you know, and I think, I think we all have empathy because we all understand that no human being should be treated in that way. No, right? that's, that's just the bottom line. It's no. just, right. you know, that's but we had, that, we had that guy. Sir, I was just going to say that's the history of the, the uh, I'm, I'm putting together research because I want to do a short video on it, but I didn't realize why the American police department was formed. And it was, it, right, it's, yes, yes. it's not, so your police department was formed for very different reasons than ours was. Right. You had your bobbies. Totally different Robert situation, Robert. right? <laughs> Our police department in the United States was specifically formed to keep enslaved people in check, to police Correct. the newly freed slaves. That's literally what it was formed for. And there's a way to so, actually yeah. and work on that 13th <laughs> Amendment where you can actually still in impri- you can actually imprison the, uh, the, the the freed slaves and then treat them like slaves again. Correct. They had to, they had to yeah. be able to put into a law, put a law into place for that. That's so you're right, correct. 
So when you have a police department formed like that with that sole purpose, what 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 else is gonna gonna turn into yeah. and evolve into through time? So uh, that's so when when you hear we have we say defund the police and some people may may or may not like that title. I don't really give a mm. crap. Um, <laughs> it it is it, it's We're all laughing really, really don't. Like some um, posts on Facebook recently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fi- defund the police is 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 a very fruitful thing. It is very logical. It is very good for society. It is very good for humanity. It is the only way we'll bring true equity and fix these problems so that we can have a police force that is here to truly serve, protect, and work Mm -hmm. with the community as part of the community, as opposed to being a military force, which we don't need. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that is really the only way I see anything changing over here. And really, the difference between our two countries, because, you know, I, I, I asked some of my friends right away thinking, hey, do you guys that are in the UK, do you feel just like you said, Ian, that you don't, you're not afraid you're going to be murdered for your skin color every time you walk out the door, but here, and they said, yeah, I don't, but, you know, we, it's, it's different here. Not that I don't experience racism. Yeah, um, I feel that way when I go to a soccer match and you guys call it soccer, we call it football. Yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> that's funny. yeah, then that's different. <laughs> there's, well, there's yeah, a little, there's a little bit of unease there, right? Yeah, that's well, the I'm, a, I'm, a che- I'm a Chelsea fan, so I'm, I'm, I'm a Chelsea, <laughs> yeah, I'm a Chelsea fan. So, so my team, my, my team has a history of racism, yeah, right? Has a history of racism, yeah. and you know, at one point during the 80s, there was a, a player called Paul Canneville, and I remember he yeah. was the first black player for Chelsea, and his own fans booed him. So his, his own, own fans hands. booed him and threw bananas at him, you know. Hands. And um, you know, he he did as 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 you know many black athletes have done over the years. He won them over because he was excellent at football. So mm-hmm. they eventually, like for the most part, calmed down. And he says he said he gets people coming up to him in the street apologizing. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like guys who would have been young guys then, I come up to him and being like, you know, I'm really sorry for what you know the way we treated you back then, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But what's so we're gonna say, Matt. Oh, well, e- even that's a, a form of conditional adoration. Do you know totally. what I mean? like, like, yeah, totally. I'm only sorry because you ended up being totally. good. Totally. So I ended totally. up I ended it's up liking you play a game. So that's why I'm sorry. I, 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 coming, coming up and saying you're sorry. I mean, it might. It, hopefully, it's changed that person's complete that person's complete life, and they're now a, a wonderful person. But coming yeah. up and saying sorry because you're good at football. It's it's the most horrible <laughs> conditional thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I was a racist is, back uh, then. Yeah. But yeah. well, it speaks to it speaks to again. It speaks to this is the this is the reality of it. So, and I've always seen it. Every every black person in the UK, their citizenship is conditional. Mm. Your 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 it's conditional. You know, if you smile, if you constantly look um, grateful for everything that has been given to you, doesn't matter how hard you work for it. You know, if you look at footballers, are a classic example of it because what you mm. see now is you see young, independent, wealthy um, black boys who have opinions, and the mm. minute that they open their mouth and say anything that that sounds like an opinion. They get they get slammed. They get In slammed the because yeah. there are there are sections there are sections of people, and it's not just the media either. Because I think that we it's too easy to dismiss this as something that's cooked up by the media. But the media they sell what sells, right? Absolutely. The media yes they yeah. they play they play into it. But our society and our community has has an issue whereby there are a lot of people who will look at a person of color and expect them to behave in a certain way. And if they if they don't right. Um, we had a comedian over here called um, Lenny Henry, yeah. right? <laughs> and he's still like, but but Lenny, Lenny Henry's a black comedian. I grew up with him, right? And some of the stuff that he did was really coonish. He did some really coonish stuff back in the day. And he knows it and he's spoken up about it. But what he did was what he felt he needed to do to survive yeah. within his white community. And what he had mm. to do was he had to be submissive, mm. right? He had to subjugate himself. He had to be submissive. He had to smile all the damn time. I mean, all the time just so that there wasn't a possibility that he would be perceived as threatening. This is Mm. the life. Now, as me and Ian sit here talking to you right now, it's not a coincidence that me and Ian happen to be, I would say, two very happy-go-lucky, smiley, personable people. (laughs) That's the reason why we have managed to navigate, we've managed to navigate to the point where we're sitting here having a conversation with you. 
Because if I had, I, a, if I, I had a Simon Cowell, other, I'd add one other thing to that slide. We're good at what we do. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, listen, listen. That's the other thing, yeah. I, I want no. That that goes without saying. But I want to be real. I want to be honest because that's the point of this conversation, right? And yeah. I want to say that it's it's a tool. It's a tool that you must have. It's a tool that you must have. If you're not yeah. able to be completely disarming and to be and to and to kind of dial down your your perceived threat level. Because when I walk around, I don't feel, well, actually, that's a lie. When I walk around outside, I'm aware that some people might perceive me as threatening. Mm. Yeah. That's just standard. You know, yeah. when people yeah. cross the road, when people yeah. grab their bag, like this stuff happens. And when it happens mm -hmm. to you a few times, you understand it. When people don't sit next to you on the, you know, there's little things, but yeah. you kind of understand your, your, your place in the world as this potentially threatening person. And this mm. is, and this is where the media kind of steps in and doubles down on it because they're constantly showing stories of oh, this, you know, stab yeah. this block. Right. right, completely. You only see black people in a, in a negative light. Right. So because of that, you have to have that tool. When you're navigating through any industry, you have to be able to make sure that you don't come across in that way. Like I was saying, and I said many, many times, you know, you, you can't be a black Simon Cow, right? <laughs> you can't be, a, like, you can't be that moody, I don't talk to anybody guy and be black. It's just not going to work for you in, in any career. You can't be a Gordon Ramsay. You can't be a black Gordon Ramsay. Like Gordon Ramsay makes great food. He also oh, throws pans at people him and screams. screaming in someone's, in a, in a woman's, uh, wait a minute, in a <laughs> right. black woman's face. I can think of a right. specific show and he called her yeah. a donkey. Oh. <laughs> Was that the American? Is that when he did the American, yes, he did the American Hell's one? Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen. Right. Yeah. Ouch. Right. Imagine yeah, if it was that's such a good point. Because one of our brand ambassadors, Jay Madison, who's yeah, like a Jay. brother to me, um, yeah. he he he'll call me and we'll talk through things and he'll say, Well, I can't say that because I'll be perceived as an angry black man. It's and it's right like to be it's angry. a constant reckoning in my brain that I, you know, he's like, Well, I this is an issue I'm having. How do I do you know? And we'll talk through it and I do the same with him, and I'm like Ugh, so I have to think around that, you know, how to, it's like a maze you have to go through, like, okay, how can he be assertive without being perceived and, and advocate for himself without being perceived as an angry black man? Same mm. with mm. women, the yeah. angry I'm black woman. Women. I mean, women, period. I'm bitchy, yeah. bossy and sassy, but I'm never a leader. I'm never called yeah. assertive and good leadership skills. Um yeah. We well, so, just have to look at someone like Serena Williams. Um, in yes. Tennis. When she blows a gasket, she is bitchy. She's this, she's this. If uh, John McEnroe or Jimmy Connors or a, a, a male or even a white male Watson tennis player does the same thing, they're like standing up for their rights. So, mm -hmm. so women, get it, women get it. Women get it. Yeah. Yeah. Women get it. What's called cool, bad as well in that respect. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I'm just, I, I just, what, what Sly said was so, was it, it just, that's what struck me is when I have these conversations and I have to think like, yes, how do you, how do you learn to navigate that? And you're constantly having to learn it because you don't really know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And it's a discussion us brand ambassadors have as well that are white for this brand Am I, you know, we all went through this thing. Am I the right person to represent this brand? Should I be representing this brand? And that was something I had to learn for myself because mm -hmm. Fawn says, well, this whiskey is for everyone. Well, of right. course it is, right? I know right. that. Um, yeah. We want everyone to be welcome to it. We want everyone to uh, drink our whiskey and, and it, to be approachable to everyone. But I still had this, should I be the one telling this story? You know? And so Jay would say to me, you have to be one of the people telling the story because 100%. you'll get into places I can't get into. Correct. And, 100%. you know, it's, it, it's, it's something... I'll tell you to stand in a room. I stood at an event at the Gates Foundation uh, right before quarantine, and it was a um, it was a, a a young black league association, young black business owners. I can't remember the name of it, and they were having a big happy hour, and um, they invited me to come in, and I I got to speak for ten minutes, and I'm like, here, little tiny me, white me, standing in this room. <laughs> Like part of my spiel is like before this brand came along, what, how, you know, how did you think about the lack of diversity in whiskey, in American whiskey, in whiskey period? You know, it's all white men. And I'm mm. saying this in front of a whole crowd of black people. And I sometimes I check myself like, 
was that okay? Am I, <laughs> am I saying okay? You know, you <laughs> like sometimes I say things that just comes out of my mouth and I'm just like, was that all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think listen, I think as long as like, you know, people people know genuine when they see it, you know? And that's yeah. what and that's all that matters, you know. When like when you when you genuinely care for something, um, that has power, it has weight. It's one of the reasons why, you know, the 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 black community in the UK, the black community in general, if you look at any of um like culturally like music like reggae or hip hop or anything like that, people have come along <laughs> from outside of the community, like David Rodigan. Do you know what yeah, I mean? This like bland looking white dude just come in and he's like, I, they've seen his passion for the music and he's just accepted. And he's okay. one of the biggest names in, in the game, right? And I've always felt that like, uh, as much as we all, we're all kind of tribal, we all have a certain level of tribal tribalism and kind mm -hmm. of, um, and we have a certain level of kind of protection of mm -hmm. our cultures and stuff like that. Like, you know, that's kind of normal. But, uh, but for me, it should never, it should never, um, what's the word? It should never go before a person's genuine love or passion. You right. know what I mean? Like you should be yeah. able to see the, you know, the the motives, a person's motive, and understand that, understand that, and treat them. You know what oh, I mean? As a, as, a, yeah. as an individual. Yeah. So, if, yeah. so if there's a white person standing up, basically saying Black Lives Matter, and they're talking to a crowd of white people or black people, and you can see that genuine passion about them, there should be nothing. Yeah. We should. There's nothing wrong with that. Because no, it's coming from a place of, of genuine, yeah, coming from what's called a place of, uh, of, of, of hope. It's coming from a place of, of where they're genuine. Um, but it, yeah, we should never actually just prejudge people and just say, no, you shouldn't be able to say that because of how you look and who you are, because then we're as bad as the people, as bad as the bigots right. that are out there. That, that, that little old lady. lady in a certain way. Ian, you seen that little old lady? The little old lady who oh, does no, the, um, the racism I from about a year ago. A year ago. Yeah, I saw her, yeah, I saw her a while ago as well. She's been doing these things like where she separates yeah, people by the eye color. Yeah, yeah. Yes. separates people by the eye color, and, and, and then she treats and then she treats the crowd stand up with different. You wanna, yeah, yeah, you want to change your place for a black person? No one's like. Yeah, well, yeah nobody you? stands yeah. up. She nobody says, stands up. Exactly. "Stands up if you would be happy to be yeah. treated the way a yeah. black American is treated every day, yeah. and none and of the white people stands up." And it's like made them feel uncomfortable, which was and that's and that's what it is. And and it's beautiful because because she's so because of who she is, I think everyone's guard is somewhat down. You know, right. she's not intimidating in the slightest way. You know, even though once you know what she's about, she's intimidating. But if you just see her come in, you be like, Ellie. okay, sure, yeah, right, Come there you go. Me. Like she's a genius. Imagine? And so there's there's important work. There is important work, yeah. like I say, that must yeah. be done by the right people, and it doesn't matter what color they are. Yeah. Can you imagine, yeah. Sailor? If Donald Trump came out tomorrow and said, "Listen, all this crap you've for the last couple of years is all rubbish. Black lives matter, and I'm changing everything." Can you imagine? Wow, he really got us down. That'd yeah. be incredible, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I'm trying to fathom. That would be that would be the Twilight Zone. That would be an episode of the Twilight Zone, like or Black Mirror. I think. Oh, Mirror yeah. I think the half the racists in America would just drop dead instantly of a heart attack. Yeah, 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 like heads, like, heads would explode. Like heads, yeah. would heads would explode. Their heads explode when they find out. It would um, be well. You yeah. know what would happen? It, it was. It would instantly be. The White House doctors have said that he has suffered from dementia, <laughs> and it just came yeah. on overnight Lord last Lord night in his sleep. Up. That's what would happen. Unfortunately. <laughs> Vice President would come it's in. Mental. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's mental. It's mental, but it's also. It's, 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 it's also. It's really. It's really beautiful because we needed all of these things to be happening. Without all of these things happening, we could That's not move forward. That's it's the a same perfect same. storm. It's yeah. the perfect storm. We needed yes. a Trump, right, mm -hmm. to embolden the racists so that, they, so that they come out, right? Because what's happened before is um, racists have have basically just decided to kind of live under the surface, right? So they're like, you know what? I'm just going to, you know, it's too much trouble for me to come above ground. I'm mm -hmm. just going to, like, I'll be my racist self at home with my mates, but on the, you know, but out in public, I'm just gonna keep that front on. Oh. And what Trump has done is he's allowed them, he's like, empowered they, they them, to the catch, right? They be he's the allowed fox. them to, to, to walk to out and, and 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 to openly challenge people of color and openly challenge and, and speak their, their their venom and their poison. And then subsequently, now we can turn around to people who may have thought, you know what? I don't think it's that much of a deal. I mm -hmm. think it's all blown out of proportion. I don't think it's that. And we can now turn to them and go, look at this. 
here, here's some more. Want some more? Here's some yeah. more. And some yeah. more, and here's it's some endless. more. And it's just a yeah. constant, constant stream of yeah. this negativity. We saw, this was the most beautiful thing that I saw recently, right? And again, it's all about this perfect storm that's happening. The Black Lives Matter protests, right? The right wing came down. So you mentioned football before, Ian. Mm, yeah. So these football, yeah. football hooligans came hooligans. down, right? Because the Black, Lives, the Black Lives Matter protesters were there for one week. And then they were like, look, they're, you know, they're doing violence and this and that. And look at them, blah, blah, blah. The following week, these, I don't call them right wing, but I mean, whatever. They're just racist. I don't think they care about wings. They're racist. Yeah. Right? They just, they just, they're, 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 xen they're xenophobic. Uh, but get this, they're xenophobic as well. Right, yeah, so they literally yeah. hate everybody. They'll fight anyone, yeah. but they yeah. come down and they they show a level of ignorance, right? That you could not. Anyone who had an <laughs> idea that the <that, that laughs> ignorance, was, you know, and violence was somehow a you know what I mean, like a, a minority issue, was greeted with such hard evidence that they, like, I literally had to clap hands for them and be like, "Thank mm. you, thank you <laughs> for showing your ass," because you come down here and you have just confirmed what many people want you to believe doesn't exist. You, mm. You've shown us is the ugly side of it, and a lot of people. Their response was, "We shouldn't upset the racists." You know, a lot of people <laughs> don't want to have this conversation. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people want to want to shove it under the carpet, not because they don't necessarily believe in it, but because they're scared that if we confront it, we're going to have to actually confront it. Confront it. And we're going right. to upset the yeah. racists, mm. and then the racists are going to come out, and they're going to start flying banners, and they're going to start causing a ruckus, right? And and for me, I'm like. We can't move forward without coming through this period. However, right. at, however we go forward, we have to. If you walk moving. through the fire to get to the other yeah. side, exactly, you have so, to. Uh, do you think it's actually having its its caught momentum over here will change things over here, not just America? Then, yes, absolutely, <clears throat> uh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like a, a high will. high level political sort of level. No, I think I think politics is always going to be full of shit. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah, I'll, I'll like that. Now, you know, what I mean, like politics well, is money. Like if it becomes, but if it becomes economically more viable, in the same way that you know slavery ended because of economics, right? It's just much easier to just let people, um, you know, fend for themselves. You still get their work for next to nothing. You don't have to house or feed them. You know what I mean? Like it was yeah. economically made sense. As much as people want to talk about, you know, the beauty and the human spirit and la la la, it was just a pain in the ass having to control human beings in perpetuity. It just like didn't work in that in that um, fashion anyway. Um, so it's much easier to bring them into the into the mainstream and and turn them into consumers, you know, and then use that money to create a police force and let that mm -hmm. let them deal with it. <laughs> but um, yeah. sharecroppers but, but where they were paying exactly. to work, basically. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, but but there's definitely a change. I think the change was was already happening. We, we're seeing it now because of you know again the lockdown and the media attention. But if you look at these young kids, these young kids are having none of. These young mm, kids exactly. don't care about any of the nonsense that we mm -hmm. cared about. They don't yeah. care. You know, black, white, this, that, whatever, gender, sexual yeah. orientation, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, we yeah. are dinosaurs. Like, we are dinosaurs. <laughs> and I'm talking about myself, too. You know we what are. I mean? Like, what I think, yeah. what I think is honestly not even that. I mean, we're talking for, for our industry. So, it's, yeah. so yeah. the relevance is for us and specifically yeah. for our industry. But on a broader sense, these kids are going to change the world because they yeah. don't like it the way it is. Yeah. And that's yeah. just, yeah. you know, that's old racist people will die yeah. eventually. They're all, they'll all, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're going to be phased out. They're going to be phased out. Be phased they're going to be phased out. You know? So speaking I saw the of... Sun... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Sly. I'll just, I'll just finish up on this one. But I say the Sun newspaper, which is notoriously um, right-wing and, yeah. you know, nicely racist, but they po they posted a front page of the um, the Black Lives Matter protester yeah. who... Anneli, so he Anneli saved my coffee out. He, right, he saved he saved a um he saved a racist um that's what a, Millwall, a racist Millwall. Yeah, he picked him up because he basically there was there was a situation where this one racist guy had said something to some guys, and then a bunch of guys had had rushed him. He was on the floor. He was about to get stomped out of existence, and then this um black guy had seen what was going on, and he just went over there and basically him lifted him up and carried him away and carried him mm. to police officers so that they could look after him. So he basically saved this guy's life. This guy mm. who inherently, who hates him, who is there to, to basically pour hate on him. And he's like, now, nah, well, I'm not going to allow that to happen because it's, there's no benefit can come of that. It's not a good move, right? And, mm. and it was so beautiful because number one, I mean, this guy looked like a freaking superhero. Right? <laughs> Have you seen the guy? Yeah, he's yeah, incredible, man. man. Like my friend, so my friend shot him. My friend shot him. 
um, he's a photographer. He shot him mm. um, a couple of days ago. And the dude, honestly, is just chiseled to... It's re- like, it's <laughs> he's an ex So you've got well, this guy, right? I don't well. know, but you've got... Yeah, who the racist guy was. No, yeah, not the, the racist, racist guy. guy was... A uh, racist guy, yeah, yeah the, the racist guy was. No, but wasn't yeah, the guy that the racist was the guy. dude that picked him up? Wasn't he? Did he work in the force or was he was a security? He was, the racist he was, guy was an ex British yeah, transport police. Yeah, the racist police. guy yeah. was a British transport police. Yeah. Yeah. So I know the racist guy is a Millwall. The racist guy, Millwall. So, uh, Millwall. Not stereotypical, but yeah. Still, <laughs> yeah, Millwall. Millwall are basically what Chelsea was in the eighties. They just never upgraded. <laughs> they, they just said, "We're gonna stay. We're gonna stay here. We like it here." You know that song they sing, "We're, we're racist," and that's the way we like it. Like that yeah. is a Millwall. That's a Millwall supporter. <laughs> so he's a Millwall supporter, and he's an ex-police officer. He's an he's a racist ex-police officer, <laughs> Millwall supporter, right? Getting rescued by a black superhero. <laughs> it's the best. It was the best. And the Sun had it on the front page, and it said, Ironic. and it said, it's not. They they quoted him on the front. They called him a hero on the Sun. They called him a Black Lives Matter hero <laughs> protester. So they yeah. so that was it. The racists were not buying the Sun anymore. But and then they said, um, yeah, that's the reason why the male is now the most, most, right? that's why the male, <laughs> the, the week afterwards, the, the over. week afterwards, the week afterwards, for the first time in 42 years, the Daily Mail no, please is now no. the number one selling, no. number one selling newspaper in the UK. <laughs> that's it, it's yeah, taken over the, the sun. sun. The sun flew too close to the sun. The sun flew too close to the sun. I got, I got to Icarus. Call Icarus, it, call Icarus black people newspaper. heroes. <laughs> Calling black people heroes on the front page. Oh, wow. They got, they, they got burned, man. But yeah, but that's, that's changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a trick. There's always a price to pay. So my, my question for you guys is, um, we have about 15 minutes left. Let's real quick touch base on what, because I'm curious about something. So... <laughs> Let's say there's the whiskey side and there's the rum side, and then mm. <laughs> then you guys are on one side of the pond, we're on the other side of the pond. Then they're drinking the beautiful 18 Uncle Nears 1856, which is available on our website, UncleNears.com. Free shipping, oh, liquid gold. Um, <laughs> Slide. Smells I was drinking like a Guyana. Rum, isn't it? Like a good, good rum, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, man, it's almost... You it's could almost like a good rum. rum if you were... Yeah, exactly. Nah. It's almost like a good rum. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a really good spirit, though. This is a really nice spirit. Like, first time I tried it, I was very impressed. Thank you. And it's beautiful. Beautifully done. Um, So, what ha- have you seen... What have you seen inside your industry, inside our industry, that is either different or shocking, or do you feel like it's the same since this started? Because I know what my experience has been Mm. over here in the US with the majority of the people I interact with on social media, and it it was quite shocking, and it's been really disappointing on this side. I I mean, I, I, I mean, I, before before all of this, before the pandemic, before um, the George Floyd incident, that's really that was a microscope to what we've been seeing for most of our lives. Um, I, I used to just look at a lot of things that happen on on things like on social media, on Facebook, and that type of stuff, and seeing a lot of knee jerk reaction to certain things. But <clears throat> as I alluded to earlier, there's a lot of people that have come out and said certain things that they felt comfortable in saying because they weren't under the microscope of what's happening at the moment. And they could have said those things two, three, four months ago and been comfortable and got away with it. Now, when they say these things, they're getting challenged by 10, 20, 30 people like, whoa, wait a minute. You used to say that before. You can't be saying that now. And there's been certain incidents that have happened online with so-called leaders within our industry that have said certain things because they had the privilege of being able to get away with it for so many for, for so long. And now they're being challenged about what they believed in before. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of the things I've seen here is people now have to be careful of what they say in public, because if their real personality comes out, then they'll be crucified and, and pulled down for it. And this is where, I mean, there was a, a very famous speaker in the 60s that actually mentioned this when they talk, spoke about two different types of people that he defined as uh, dangerous to black communities, especially, was the fox and the wolf. Because the fox is a person that will smile at you and show you their teeth and that type of stuff. But you think they look really nice and fluffy and furry, but they'll still eat your chickens. As a, at least with the wolf, when they smile, you know what you're getting. <laughs> you know what you're getting. So when someone is overtly racist, 
um, prejudice, um, sexist, homophobic, um, all the types of things that you uh, that would be discussed of, if they're like that overtly, at least you know where you stand with them. You know where you stand with them. It's the ones that will, as, as someone said earlier, that will laugh and joke with you, smile with you to your face inside events, uh, drinks events around the world that we're at, and then go home and they're all with their mates and then they're basically calling you all sorts of names and that type of stuff behind your back. They're the ones that are more dangerous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and because of where we are at the moment with certain, certain situations, certain things get posted because people get emotional. Maybe they had a couple of drinks, they post something <laughs> online, bam, it's there forever. It's there forever. And everyone sees it. And this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm seeing now. We are it, we are now seeing uh, the, 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 the genuine people that are out there and the people that are really genuinely not for the benefit for the benefit of, of, of people of, of all society, of all cultures, of all sexuality. You can see the people that are not for that um, from what we've seen now online in the last couple of months. So it's been a microscope. It's been a microscope. You've been with and it, it's funny because there's so many people that I that generally that generally fooled me. And I looked at them and I was like, wow, you know what? I really thought you was a, a, a good person. But after what I've seen you post, what I've seen you react to, what I've seen you do, what I've seen you say, I realized I was wrong and I have nothing to do with you. I'm still going to learn off of you because I want to learn mm-hmm. what not to do, who not to hang out. And maybe you can teach me how to see this in the future. Yeah, what, what I've seen, what I've seen is, is, is um, and what's, what's been kind of um, refreshing is just seeing um, people kind of doing that death rattle, right? So they want to hold on <laughs> to their previous beliefs and, you know, they come up with these arguments and they're always useless arguments. They are absolutely yeah, nonsense, massively. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, like, you know, we won't go off on, on, on the tangent, but Ian, you remember that slave rum? Just, oh, just man. Very briefly, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, somebody, yeah. Somebody, somebody introduced a product, a product in the world, which is, called, yeah. which is basically, it's called slave rum. That's what? what it's called. And that's what it's called. Yeah, and it was like been going for six and it years. was called um yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 you know, any any sane person would be like, nah, that's not a good look. But you yeah. had people on there going, Oh, it's an homage. It's an it's homage, homage to slaves that made it. It's like, you what, mate? You what an homage? Just because you say it's one, number one, who told you that means anything? That doesn't mean anything. Like, no, but it's an homage. Who's uh, How's homage it an homage? Is not some kind of magical oh. card. Oh, sorry, play. Sailor. Sailor, the reason why it's an homage because it's on their webpage. Because oh. <laughs> it says okay. those words. It yeah, says the words homage and it's spelled correctly. So it's that, right? <laughs> but my thing is this, even if it even if it falls, uh, even if it checks all the boxes for whatever the hell a homage is, right? Even if it checks those boxes, who gives a shit? It's right. like if your if your mother, if your mother died of lung cancer, right? And then some company decided to just like sell cigarettes with her face on it. It's right? an homage. You'd be like, what the fuck? Right? <laughs> and then they'd be like, no, 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 it's an homage. It's an homage, it's an homage to your mum. <laughs> You're like, what is wrong with you guys? She like, loved, what is she wrong loved smoking. You? <laughs> she loved cigarettes, it's an homage. <laughs> dedicated to the, you know, to the to her lungs. Rest in peace. So, <laughs> so I think that people come up with these weird arguments for things, right? And you, you're seeing them. And what's refreshing is they're so pathetic. They're so every single one of them, every single one, every single argument I've seen is just so stupid right yeah. and you and you find that you have a conversation about race what i will say is if you do engage somebody in a conversation about race be careful because it's like one of those little machines you put the coin in the top and it just kind of right. bounces around <laughs> but it all yeah, ends up have, in the same yeah. place at the bottom yeah exactly. there's only two lanes there's like two lanes they're either going to say one or two things they're going to say black on black crime yeah right doesn't matter you what you're talking yeah. about yeah. they'll say it, you it don't care about each other black is the culprit or oh, the other matter. one is yeah or the other one, yeah and the other one is um you know black people sold slaves yeah this is that's the, like favorite. that one's gonna come <laughs> that's the best one ever like, yeah, I'm like oh favorite. wow amazing yeah so yeah look this phone who's calling me no way. <laughs> we're not open we're not yeah. open <laughs> it's the slave room Sorry, guys. calling it's slave room calling oh my right God. now it's slave room calling saying we want to sponsor yeah somebody's upset with you happiness look Season someone, someone's up Somebody's upset with me right now. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it. Well, I didn't mean it, actually. It was but, you, know, you, happiness. you guys open <laughs> next week. Yeah. It's madness. Like, is anyone, what is going on? Seriously, what is going on? Oh, sorry. You can always plug out the phone, Sly. 
I'm I was trying. Like, you know what? Was so fun. That would have been, been the that would have been the that would have been the smart thing to do, Ian. Someone's calling you a dinosaur. That would have been the smart thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, do you know what? I'm I'm seriously really good with, with IT. I will get the phone right, called out. Right. <laughs> right. My I'll nephew, my, nep- my nephew is on Facebook, and he just said, "Defo a dinosaur with a house phone still." <laughs> <laughs> That's it's Andre. The, it's it's my house. It's <laughs> not my house. It's, it's no, my I, house. I'm phone defending you. I said it's your yeah, office. Phone phone. <laughs> yeah. On the quick note, um, are you taking bookings for trailer, or are you? We will that, do. That, yeah, we will is do. That what we'll you start. have to do. Bookings is. Yeah, bookings is starting up. We're going to do like a little special um party on the fourth of July. Ian's Ian's going to be behind the bar. Making drinks. Um, Can yeah. you serve me? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make a couple of daiquiris. I was I'll about to say, I've, I've tasted Ian's drink. And, um, <laughs> oh, I'm wearing a little rum heavy. Oh, cool. Perfect. 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 oh my god! Yeah, man, I'm doing my I do my guest. See, normally I don't do guest shifts. I do guest drinking. And I go into bars. <laughs> if you see me in bars around the world. Once, once a pandemic, so when I'm allowed to travel again, I do a lot of guest drinking. But yeah, I've been behind a bar slinging some drinks with. Uh, 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 Amazing. Oh God! I wish I could. Yeah, so can you guys ship me a drink, please? Yeah, we can do a boomerang for you, Sailor. We'll Perfect. Do a boomerang for you. <laughs> the other, Where the other question. In the states. <laughs> Sorry. Where are you based? I am in Washington State right now. Yeah. Okay. So all up near, up near Nick West. Ferris and the Rum Fire Posse. <laughs> in in Seattle. Yeah. He's yes. In Seattle. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 What were you going to say, what? Matt? I was going to say, um, uh, are you you're delivering cocktail? Are you doing any delivery of cocktails or anything like that? Have you been doing that during lockdown? We have we have cocktails on Deliveroo, but I never really got into uh, into the whole delivery thing. Yeah, just because I would have had to unfurlough my staff, yeah. and I you know I wasn't confident that I'd be able to generate enough revenue from for our area. Yeah. Our area is very much a rose. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like chilled yeah. out, not in here. Like yeah. it's not it's not East London. It's not like loads of young kids that are going to be ordering this stuff. It's Although I haven't said that, I haven't said that, it might have done well, but I just wasn't prepared to take that risk. And our merchandise was doing so well, like selling T-shirts and caps and stuff. And that was doing so yeah. well that I just felt like I'd just stay with that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I did that, I could do that all myself. You know, I got a box of clothes and I'd go to the post office and I'd do the website. Um, so that's what I did. And now we're doing takeaway at the front right. upstairs. Amazing. And that's just gone. That's gone through the roof. Highly recommend that's the pina coladas. Are you going to continue oh, yeah, doing the takeaway pro. when when you open yes, as well? Absolutely, Brilliant. absolutely. Trailer, trailer. When trailer opens back up, it will be it will be a different animal. Yeah, it will yeah. be a different animal. Um, one thing that this whole lockdown has has, has given me is perspective. Um, both you know on a personal and on a professional level, and yeah, the, the whole the whole bar basically starts again. It starts fresh. That's fantastic. From um, the 4th of July. I was saying right at the beginning, before you managed to get on, are you going to get rid of the four deep uh, speed rails that mean you can't reach the sink? <laughs> 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 they are the most uncomfortable things I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, it's, it's not the most ergonomic design when it comes speaking, to that. Speaking of, which, know, we won't... speaking of which, Matt, when are we going to get an Uncle Nearest cocktail in Trailer Happiness? That's oh, what I, I mean, I'll, we're, I'll, we're I'll open for sponsorship. <laughs> we can create a tiki cocktail with uh, with some Tennessee whiskey. Heck yeah, you can. Um, you you better be down for that. It's going to be one of the first uh, bars I go back down to. That. Down for that. We can talk business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't Definitely. wait. Also, I Matt, wait. are you related to um? Are you related to um? What's his name? McAvoy. No. <laughs> are you no. To, <laughs> I went to the, to the McAvoy same, kid. I went to the same drama school, and I do know him. But no, I'm every not. Minute, he lives near me. Yeah, every I, he lives near me. He goes you're wearing his, the you're wearing me. his face. You're wearing his face, man. <laughs> oh, literally, I, I keep looking over at you, and I'm like, oh, sh- it's ex Professor X. If somebody <laughs> had told me that barber shops were going to open, you know, hairdressers are going to open on the fourth, I wouldn't have bothered doing this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks also, lovely, mate. Looks I've also lovely. got a bald patch behind one oh, ear where no. the actual guard came off. And <laughs> oh, oh, I no. told you not to do it. You didn't listen to me. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, it was it. it was a dumb idea. Uh, uh, <laughs> never listen to the woman about hair. Plus, <laughs> if, if anybody out there is thinking of shaving their head, don't do it in the middle don't of summer because I, I like literally shaved, sort of shaved it really short and realized that everything under hair, really, really pale. <laughs> Evan here, right. really, really red. Well, on a serious tip, <laughs> right, right, right. on a serious tip, on a serious tip though, Matt, we, we talk about what's called uh, Black Lives Matters and 
and all the other types of uh, um, prejudice that happens around the world, um, uh, prejudice against women, prejudice against what's called um, uh, uh, the LGB, what's called um, uh, the LGBTQ um, um, people yeah. out there. Redheads and gingers get it worse. Are you? Uh, no, I, I don't know. I don't know about worse. <laughs> everybody, uh, gets, everybody <laughs> gives it to them. Everybody gives it to them. I think it's died down over the few years, and you know what? I mean, it, it, you know, I, I've. I, I, it's just I've had a general bit of ribbon, isn't it? You, know, <laughs> yeah, you guys have got, it's, yeah, it's you've got low trait. latency. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you Nobody's know, trying it, to like act, actively that's, assassinate that's, ginger people. Uh, as far as I know, I mean, that's the toughest it, one. That's the uh, toughest no, one. No, no, I, I, I can handle being called copper knob. You know, okay. that, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's <laughs> okay. All right, boys. Have that one before? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm listen, gonna, I'm gonna rein it in. We've overstayed our welcome. I'm yeah. gonna yeah. rein it in. I have another uh, something I have to jump to, and right. um, yeah. thank you off. so so much for you guys for for giving us your time. I yeah. appreciate it so much. Come back again, please. I would love to do it. Matt, we should do a live broadcast when um, trailer opens so that we can. Ooh, wouldn't same. that be fun? That would be um, so anybody, fun. Anybody watching should definitely, definitely, definitely get down to um, trailer on the 4th. It's going to be, I, I imagine it's going to be absolutely brilliant. And um, <laughs> also, I, I remember bef I, if it's going to be an, a different beast, I do imagine it will probably still have the same atmosphere it used to have. Oh, yeah. Was... No, that won't change. <laughs> yeah. That won't change. Same, I've, yeah, I've the, fallen the heart, out of that same heart. Yeah, yeah, same it's, it's fair few yeah. night buses home for me, but I'll, I'll definitely, I'll <laughs> definitely do that. Do it, yeah, mate. <laughs> thank oh, no, you, thanks, thanks for thank coming you on. So right, much, thanks, guys. Ian, and let, nice please so let much. me know. Don't forget when your rum is ready. I'm your girl out here. I got you. It's delicious. I know it's ready. Also, can I just do a quick shout out? A quick shout out, shout out to my to my current tipple of choice, which is the Uncle Nearest mixed with some double Dutch ginger beer. It's a good oh, shout out. Nice. Oh, nice. Ginger beer now. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, check that out. See if it's any good. See if it's any good. I'll try it. Yeah, mate. I got a case down here. Come and grab some. <laughs> I'll come and try. Come car, try some. All right. A girl from Setford might complain though. <laughs> Tulu might complain. Thanks, everybody. Okay, Let's enjoy the rest Love of the time. Love you, Tulu. All right. Drink honorably. Stay safe. See you later. Love you all. Yes, Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.